okay this zoo is in mysore uh, this zoo is in some country some place some location there is a mother father there are children their wives husbands this that that is all the world that is there and there is a zoo keeper who keeps on giving them food every day water and food water and food okay they have to perform for those idiots who come there in front human beings so sometimes when the human beings come and they, they they throw a stone at me then you have to do, you have to do like this so that they feel wow it's a tiger it's a tiger and then there is a mother monkey and a you know a baby over there the mother monkey tells the small baby that is the human beings she she see tiger tiger see he is roaring they are mighty pleased because they have paid money for it so people go to the zoo and they feel mighty pleased by looking at us so in the same way you have your relatives coming and saying oh how is your baby how are things with you how is the examination how is this have they gone to this college have they done this thing sometimes you fall sick then there is a vet who comes isn't it the vet will come and take care of you like that in this world there are doctors hospitals you get admitted to them something happens how big is your world your world is like you are a zoo animal you don't have any idea about who created you why you are there you don't want to know anything about me i am the lord of this universe we are doing chapter 9 of the bhagavad gita verse 11 not knowing my supreme nature fools deride me the overlord of the entire creation who have assumed the human form that is to say they take me who has appeared in the human form through my yoga maya for deliverance of this world as an ordinary mortal sri krishna is telling arjuna with my own nature remember prakriti is my own nature so prakriti is somebody whom i have given the authority to create so let us say there is a household now in the household there is someone who decides what is going to be the food today the menu for the day so the cook or whoever that is there i'm talking about a very big household maybe a king's place or something like that so there is somebody who designs that particular day we are going to have this we are going to have this we are going to have this so 10 20 items are being made but now the king says to the cook he says come here i want a very special item to be made only for myself do you think the cook is going to object the king is talking boss you can't object the king wants special things what is it what that has got to do with what other people want other people is a general menu the man who is general everybody has to eat from the same thing but the super boss says i want this there is nobody in this world who can object to the super boss so mother nature is that cook which creates everything in this world she makes her recipes human beings are like this animals are like this birds are like this trees are like this stones are like this this earth is like this the moon is like this. she has created all these with different characteristics so sri krishna commands her and says 
I want to be born in this world. My menu. So, when I want to take a birth, I decide when I want to take a birth. I don't have to depend on anybody. Do I have to ask anybody's permission? No. So I take birth as a human being. And like an ordinary mortal. I don't even show that I am Sri Krishna from any angle. I'm the super boss who comes incognito. Nobody knows I, I exist. And if they think they know that I exist, I act like a dummy in this world. I behave like an ordinary person. Nobody has any clue. So they look at me and they say to me, Ah, look at this fellow. What does he think of himself? What? God Almighty, ah? They look at me and talk like this. I perform miracles in everybody's lives. But nobody knows that I am doing it. If a child is born to somebody, before the child is born, they will come and they will say, hey, I want a baby, you know. Hey, yeah, yeah, okay. So the baby is born and they turn around and they say, you know what? I went to this particular uh, doctor and I did this in vitro fertilization and uh, they gave me a chance, 30% chance of having a baby. The doctor is very good. So the doctor is greater than God. So he has given me the baby. Or sometimes when a person is dying, a person will come and say, save me. At that time, now the person may be suffering from cancer or some dangerous disease. We say, okay, nothing is going to happen, go. The doctor gives them, you know, all kinds of radiation therapy, this therapy, that therapy. And the person becomes okay. No... There is no trace of even the cancer. And they say the doctor was very good. The medicine did its effect. He's so kind, you know, the doctor was so kind. I did a treatment for two years. Now I'm saved. And they forget the Lord who was there, who has said, okay, everything will be fine. Not knowing the true nature of the Lord. These foolish people, they look at the Lord and they deride Him. They have no idea. Because He covers Himself up with His Yoga Maya. A Yoga Maya means nobody has any clue what is happening. They become oblivious to all the things in the world. They have no idea. Not knowing my supreme nature. How, how many people will know the supreme nature? Even if I give them the whole of Bhagavad Gita and I make one nice juice of it and I make them drink also, they will not know. Because the moment they are told about this, the next minute after this, they forget about it. Okay, I don't know who is this guy. This is what happens. I am the overlord of the entire creation. I am the one who does the whole creation. It is under my command that Mother Nature has to make this world. They think that I have assumed a human form. So they look at me, oh this fellow. He cannot be something. So that thought itself doesn't appear. That is to say they take me who has appeared in human form through my yoga maya. Yoga maya is a very complex thing. My own potency. I do my own magic, okay? 
<laughs> so the person forgets immediately. There is no need for anybody to know. Why should that person know? There is no need, no? So this person believes that, oh, things are happening the way they are happening, the way they are supposed to happen. So they don't know that there is a yoga maya at play. She is the director, producer, everything over there. She is directing the whole flow of this world. And I cover myself up like an ordinary mortal. But why do I come here? Because I want to deliver this world. I am not here to take charge of the whole world. I am here to do what I have come to do. A few souls that can be redeemed. That's it. Everybody can't, cannot be redeemed. So I come for this reason. So this is a verse which is a very peculiar verse. Where Sri Krishna explains that he has come. But nobody will have any clue that he has come. Okay. So we will go to the next verse. So we are doing chapter 9. Bhagavad Gita verse 12. Those bewildered persons with vain hopes, futile actions and fruitless knowledge have embraced a fiendish, demonical and a delusive nature. What these people have done? They are bewildered. Bewildered means everything around that person makes them feel that they are somebody else. I want you to think, there is a zoo, there is a zoo in India, it's called the Mysore Zoo, okay, they had some white tigers, now when you say white tiger, are there really white tigers, genetic defect? Like we have, you know, that white patches, we have leucaria or something they call it. Like that maybe the tiger had something. Now they were the couple, they kept him in the zoo. They had many children, all of them turned out white. Now, these new tigers which were born in captivity, do they know anything about the outside world? No knowledge. <laughs> they just know that they are within these iron bars over here. They get food to eat because somebody gives them food to eat. They believe this person who is there is the mother. This person is the father. So mother tiger, father tiger. Bas. That's it. And there are all those monkeys around who come and see us, look at us. Ah, white tiger, white tiger, white tiger. So these human monkeys which are there, they keep on paying money and coming over here. Sometimes they throw something at us. Mummy and daddy has told us, don't bother, these are idiots, they will keep on throwing things. But if they try to come in our house, no, you just bite them off. She has told them that. So, how big is their world? Nothing. It is within the confines of their life. Human beings are like these idiots. They stay in one house. House is that, you know, Chidiagar Zoo, Zoo, you understand a zoo? They have walls around them. Okay? This zoo is in Mysore. Uh, this zoo is in some country, some place, some location. There is a mother, father. There are children. There are wives, husbands, this, that. That is all the world that is there. And there is a zookeeper who keeps on giving them food every day. Water and food. Water and food. Okay. They have to perform for those idiots who come there in front. Human beings. 
So sometimes when the human beings come and they, they, they throw a stone at me, then you have, to do, you have to do like this. So that they feel, wow, it's a tiger, it's a tiger. And then there is a mother monkey and a, you know, a baby over there. The mother monkey tells the small baby, that is the human beings, See, 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 tiger, tiger. See, he's roaring. They are mighty pleased because they have paid money for it. So people go to the zoo and they feel mighty pleased by looking at us. So in the same way, you have your relatives coming and saying, Oh, how is your baby? How are things with you? How is the examination? How is this? Have they gone to this college? Have they done this thing? Sometimes you fall sick. Then there is a vet who comes, isn't it? The vet will come and take care of you. Like that in this world, there are doctors, hospitals. You get admitted to them, something happens. How big is your world? Your world is like you are a zoo animal. You don't have any idea about who created you, why you are there. You don't want to know anything about me. I am the lord of this universe. You think your mother and father gave birth to you. You work in this world and think, oh, this is what I got to do. So, those bewildered persons with vain hopes, they have hopes. What are the hopes of human beings? Oh, I will get married, I will settle down, I will have children, I will have a nice house. These are the hopes. My children will go to good school, they will go to good college, they will have nice education, they will grow up into bigger beings. You know, they like that. I, I know everybody is going to be very happy. These are the stupid hopes that everybody has. Sri Krishna explains that there are these bewildered people with vain hopes. Futile actions. They do actions which are absolutely futile. What futile actions do they do? They'll keep on talking, you know, I bought this, you know, this happened, that happened. You know this one, she behaves like that. You know that one, that person behaves like that. Oh, they are like this. They, they bought this big house and now they are going to have another so much of money in the account. Oh, do you know, this one bought a Maybach. Oh, wow, Maybach, huh? Very good. Why this futile talk? Human beings make futile talk every minute. Whenever they open their mouth, they talk utter nonsense. You go to your company and you talk some utter nonsense yourself. After you are thrown out of the company, somebody else will come in that place. That person will also talk utter nonsense. Don't you think so? Huh? So this is how it works. Everybody is there for that time being. So these bewildered persons with vain hopes, futile action and fruitless knowledge. What is this knowledge all about? They have taken some fancy degrees. They have done all kinds of studies in this world. They do this. They are subject matter experts in some field. They think that they are doing some great shakes in this world. Oh, I am a this and I am a that. I am a CEO of a company. Well, tomorrow I will close down your company. You are going to be nobody there. So what kind of action do you think you are doing? And what makes you think that your knowledge is something great? Fruitness knowledge. That this knowledge is not going to give them any fruit. Except some money so that they can be futile human beings. And they have embraced a fiendish, demonical and delusive nature. And they have actually accepted this nature of theirs. I am a husband. I am a wife. I am a father. I am a mother. I am a child. I do this. I go to school. I go to college. I earn my living. This is all they do. I got to save. I have to take care of my uh, father and mother. I have got to have, you know, when I retire, I need to have this money. I better have a house. 
How about EMIs to pay? Fiendish, demonical and delusive nature. This is the nature of human beings. They have taken this nature up thinking that they are some ordinary people. Can you name somebody who doesn't fall into this category? There isn't a single person in this world who doesn't fall into this category. Why? Because everybody does the same thing. If everybody does the same thing, are they mediocre people or are they great people? If somebody is having a house, having a spouse, having children, sending them to school, uh, taking, going to college, and is it anything different in life? So Sri Krishna is explaining to Arjuna, these people have thought of themselves as some ordinary folks. And they are not doing anything with their life. I hope you understand. 99.99999% of the people are these. When he says fiendish, demonical and delusive nature. What does he mean? What is fiendish? Now let us say you have a father and a mother. You are staying in some country. You are not taking care of them. Okay? You don't bother about them. You're only bothered about your own children, your own house, your own stuff. And those poor fellows are struggling every day. They may be farmers, you know, for all you know. Is your nature good or is your nature bad? It is fiendish. You are self-centered human being. Selfish to the core. You are only bothered about yourself, not anything else. In spiritual world, the person is different. We will come to that just now. Demonical, self-centered people who bother only about their own eating, drinking, money, this, that. They are demonical in nature. And they are willing to do anything in this world so that they can live. They are demonical. Who is a divine person? I want you to think in your mind. We will take a demon and we will take a divine. Two people. A demon is a person who looks at other people's properties. Ravana. He has so much of his own. But he is looking at somebody else's property. He wants more, 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 more. He goes to Shiva and he says, I want your Atma Linga also. Why? I have more power. I will get more power. Demonical people work for others. They want money from them. They want power from them. They want to be somebody in this world. Now let us say divine people. Why will a divine person bother about all these things? Divinity is God. Would you agree? God gives. You go to him in front of him and you say, God give me this. God gives, isn't it? You ask for anything, he will give you. Go to Lakshmi and say, give me money, she will give you. Go to Saraswati say, give me knowledge, she will give you. Does Saraswati say, come to me, I want million dollars from you. Do you think that is what she talks? Is she bothered about your property? She is not bothered about your money. She is not bothered about your property. She is not bothered about asking anything from you. So divine people don't ask. You can give them one small token from your side. When you go to the temple, you put some money in the hundi, isn't it? That's it. You think you can buy her out? No. So God, divine, doesn't ask anything. You give on your own, it's a different story. This is the truth. 
So now think about it. Are you divine or are you demonical? Common sense will tell you every person in this world is demonical in nature because they don't know how to give. The day you realize that you have to give not to your children or your family. Does uh, Saraswati say, I want to give it to my children. Uh, Lakshmi says, I want to give. And they don't even have children. Do you think Parvati is going to do that? I don't care. She doesn't care. She stays in the mountain over there somewhere. So they don't care. Shivji is going to be sitting in cold. He is not asking for anything. Human beings go like a petty human beings. They are demonical in nature. It is the demon who wants something. So now think about it. Do you think any human being has transcended this? And gone to become a divine person? I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. If it is not for you, it is for your family. I want my father's help to be okay. I want my mother's help to be okay. I want this money. The money has to come to me. I want this so much. What is this? That is demonical nature. It's a delusive nature because they are so deluded, they don't realize they are God themselves. <laughs> they are a part of me, you know. <laughs> I am there. No? <laughs> Nobody realizes that. So I think we will stop over here because uh, the next two verses are all about divine people. How divine people understand.